Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome for, thanks for joining our, uh, our little chat here. We're out at the uh, Feathers and Scales building, out at Brookfield Zoo, and I'm going to introduce you all to some of the uh, snakes that we have on exhibit over here. So I'm going to show you a big variety. Some of them are here from, from Illinois, some are from faraway exotic places. It'll be a really, really fun time. Then at the end, we can I'll take some questions from you guys if you have them. So the first snake I want to show you, sitting up here on this uh, piece of bark, is an uh, eastern Massasauga rattlesnake. Uh, that is getting close to full size. They're a very small species of rattlesnake, and they are a species of rattlesnake that you can find here in Illinois. Uh, at one time, there were even known populations here in the Chicagoland area. Uh, it's been a long time since any of them have been uh, spotted, in, at least in this part of the state. Um, like most snakes, they are uh, rodent eaters, so this guy would eat mice and voles out where they're found. One thing that's kind of cool about the Massasaugas is uh, when they hibernate in the winter, they actually use crayfish burrows. So they'll go down, they'll get in a crayfish burrow, and the crayfish burrow goes deep enough where it doesn't get below uh, freezing. So that's how they uh, survive the winter. So they're somewhat dependent on having crayfish in those kind of wetlands and marshy areas that will uh, support crayfish as well. So um, that's one of our, our jewels here from Illinois. Uh, really nice little little rattlesnake. So the next rattlesnake I want to tell you guys a little bit about. She's sitting in the back. She's definitely a little bit bigger than our uh, Massasauga. A uh, very pretty snake. This is a Aruba Island rattlesnake, and like the name says, they are found on the island of Aruba, and that is the only place they are found. They're found on the very uh, southern end of the island and in dry, rocky areas. They estimate maybe 250 or less of these guys left out in the wild. Um, so they are listed as critically endangered, and they are part of uh, SSP, which is a species survival program, which is kind of an organized, coordinated uh, program for keeping these guys in captivity and reproducing them and keeping a healthy population. So like the Massasauga, like this one, one thing that's, these are all pit vipers, um, along with being rattlesnakes. Uh, if, I don't know if the camera can get close up on the face, but if you look, it almost, looks like they have uh, what would maybe be four nostrils. Well, two of those are actually heat sensing pits. And that allows these snakes to hunt in the dark. Basically, it's gonna give them what you would, they think something like a thermal imaging camera where they could see the warm parts of a prey item they were looking at. Um, obviously, these are rattlesnakes. They're all venomous animals. And one thing, um, the rattlesnakes all have is their fangs actually lay flat on the roof of their mouth. When they get ready to strike, they open their mouth, the fangs are on a hinge, they'll come out, they bite, and they inject their venom. So the fang is very much like a hypodermic needle, and I actually have one here. Might be hard to focus in on. But if you look, you can kind of see the little opening in the front of the fang, and that's where the uh, venom would come out and then get injected. Not sure if it's picking that up for you guys or not. Oh, just a little bit. Cool. So we have one last species of rattlesnake to show you, and this is a Catalina Island rattlesnake. Now what sets this snake as really unique from the couple other rattlesnakes and all the other rattlesnakes out there, and we can't see it because how he's laying, but this is a rattlesnake that does not have a rattle. And that's just the, um, how these guys are. Um, rattlesnakes form their rattles every time they shed a little bit of the shed gets stuck on the last segment of rattle. 
on the end of the tail. So it gets longer and longer and longer over time. They get brittle so they can break off. Some people say you can tell the age of a rattlesnake by how many segments are on the rattle. That's not true. Because um, they may shed a whole lot when they're very young and they're growing fast. As they get older and their growth slows, um, they shed a lot less. So uh, it's thought that these guys lost their rattle because of a lack of um, predators. Uh, rattle is a warning uh, uh, mechanism for rattlesnakes. They, they're going to rattle to try to make the threat go away um, rather than have to have it escalate. They would rather have that rattle and what was ever threatening them uh, go away. So what makes it a rattlesnake? Well, the features that would make it um, a rattlesnake, again, it has the pits. So it's a pit mm. viper and the nostrils. Um, the bone structure, everything about this is a rattlesnake. It's just over years. It, at one point it had a rattle and then that rattle went away. So next, I'm gonna show you a few species of snake that I can actually put my hands on because they're safe to get my hands on. Um, the first one is this little guy right here. Now this is another snake you can find uh, here in Illinois. They tend to be found in kind of sandy, sandy scrubby areas, and this is called a hognose snake. So if you look, you can see he's kind of got that little upturned, upturned nose. And that is actually um, hard. So they'll use that to dig and burrow down. So that's kind of an adaptation with that little no, uh, projection coming off the top of his nose. Now these guys are kind of interesting because they are what's considered a rear fang venomous snake. So the rattlesnakes I just showed you, the fangs are up in the front of their mouths. With these guys, it's actually fixed fangs in the back of the mouth that they can inject a small amount of venom into something they were eating. Maybe enough to take a toad down, not enough to uh, harm a person. Uh, one thing that's really cool that these snakes do, if they feel threatened out in the wild, they will kind of play possum is the saying, or they will do a fake uh, death. So they will sit, they will convulse, they will flip on their backs. If they just ate, they maybe throw up their last meal, make themselves look as disgusting and um, unappetizing as possible to uh, whatever might be eating them. And then they'll flip over on their back and lay there like they're dead and wait for the threat to, uh, to move away. Now this is another uh, species of snake that's gonna stay relatively small. A uh, couple feet would be about the most that would be a pretty large uh, hognose like we would have have here in Illinois. But very, very cool, interesting little, little snake. So the next one I have for you is another native of Illinois. And this is called a fox snake. And you can find these guys here in the Chicagoland area if you get out into some of the uh, larger forest preserves. They'll inhabit wooded areas, they'll inhabit fields. They're very versatile, great rodent control um, for people out there who uh, maybe have mice. This would be a great thing to have around. It'd be great for farmers with storing feed and barns and things like that. So. Um, this guy is getting close to full size. They usually come in three and a half, four feet at full size. Um, and it, I want you to kind of look at the pattern of this one, and even the Massasauga, think back, or the Hognose, think back to a little bit, and then think back to the Massasauga, the first one. You see the pattern and colors on this snake is very similar to what the Massasauga was. So an adaptation the fox snakes have taken on is if they feel threatened, you can see he has no rattle, if they're in dried sticks or leaves or anything like that, they will actually vibrate their tails and it will make a buzzing noise to try to fool whatever they feel is threatening them into thinking that um, they're a venomous snake and should go away. So that's kind of cool. Um, they're called fox snakes because another thing they can do for defense is emit a musk from glands that they have 
that's really stinky and smells a lot like a male fox just just marked uh, a territory. So that's another uh, defense. So aside from the rattle, how can you tell the fox snake apart from the Massasauga? Well, the good uh, uh, one obvious way is this tail comes to a point. Even a rattlesnake that maybe broke it, broke all its rattles off, it has a rounded blunt tail. So that's the easiest on site. Okay. Um, if you saw something this big, it, most likely it's not a Massasauga or we got a world record setter. Um, oh, because they're really, they're smaller. They stay smaller. Yeah, okay. Um, there are some other features that set, like this snake, say from a Massasauga, if you look at the eyes, this guy has round pupils, mm. where the Massasauga has more elongated, like a cat's. But I generally tell people if you're close enough to see that and it's a Massasauga, you made a horrible mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, okay, so so go by the tail go, and go, the size, not go, by go, the eyes. <laughs> yes, very, yes, very good. Um, but the rattle would be the biggest thing. It's okay. gonna, like I said, it, it, um, on the rattlesnakes, the end of it would look kind of like my peak, the okay. end of their tail, as opposed to coming to a point. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get one other animal out here for you guys. You give me just a minute. <laughs> hey, if you guys have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. Because when Mark is done, he'll answer anything you want to know about snakes. So this is the other animal I wanted to show you. Now I guess I kind of lied a little bit at the beginning because this is not a snake. And I said I was going to introduce you to some of the snakes over here. But an animal like this will get mistaken for a snake quite a bit. This is what's called a legless lizard. So this has a lizard and what are some of the features that uh, set this apart? And we can tell that this is a lizard and not a snake. I can get her to, oh there she goes. She blinked her eye. Snakes don't have eyelids. So a snake's eye is covered with a clear membrane that protects it, but a snake can't ever close its eyes. So you never know if a snake's sleeping or not. This one um, has eyes, so that's our first sign that it's not a snake. That's a real easy one. Other thing, they're real small, right below my finger here, that is her uh, ear opening. Snakes don't have any external ears. Snakes hear through, they pick up vibrations from bones that are in their jaw, very similar to little bones that we would have in our head that um, function the same way. And, let's see if I can get her. Oh, here we are. Right in front of, it's very small, that tiny little, looks almost like a grain of rice, that is what's left of this animal's legs. So over, over all the years this animal's been on, on the earth, it has slowly lost its need for legs. So they have gotten tinier and tinier and tinier to where it's just that tiny little bit right now. But if we were to look at a uh, radiograph or x-ray, we would still see the structure of, of hips and a pelvis, all the things that would support legs. Those are still there in this animal. So, do you guys have any questions? Yes. What do they eat at the zoo? Well, we looked at a bunch of different ones, but all the snakes we looked at, we feed them mice. So, mice of various sizes, because the Catalina, who's a pretty big snake, can actually take a pretty big mouse, where the hog nose is kind of small, so we feed really small mice to them. Um, the legless lizard actually eats some mice, but we also give the legless lizard um, earthworms and crickets, so we include some insects in their diet, a little more generalized diet than a real specific rodent diet. How often do they eat? So all the ones that I showed you today, except the Catalina, because she's pretty big, she's full size, we're only feeding her every two weeks, and that's all she needs to, to maintain. We weigh them all regularly. Yes, we have ways to move venomous snakes around onto scales and onto different things, um, so that snake we're feeding every other week now. The Massasauga, the Hognose, the Catalina Island, uh, the Fox Snake, they're all getting fed once a week. 
this guy gets fed about three times a week. Oh, because he's not a snake. <laughs> um, do any of these snakes or the legless lizard like water? So, I mean, they like water in the sense of uh, obviously everything needs water to survive to drink. Um, where the Catalinas are found, the Catalina Island rattlesnakes are found, they tend to be found in dry, scrubby areas, so there's not a lot of water around. I'll catch the hognose um, taking a bath sometimes in his water bowl. You'll see the massasaugas. The massasaugas are actually found in marshy areas, so I guess you would say, yeah, that they do like, like water and they're hibernating down in crayfish burrows. And you'll see the fox snakes go in and soak themselves sometimes too. <laughs> So we're in the feathers and scales building right now, but we also have reptiles in the, or snakes in the reptile. Reptiles and birds. And birds, okay. Sometimes they get those mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> reptiles and birds. So how many snake species total do we have between, between these two buildings? Oh, between, if you give me just a second. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm counting exhibits, 13, <laughs> uh, 14, that same species, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 or 19, but I maybe missed one. And that's just between the two buildings. We have a, um, a lot of snakes around in other buildings out here as well. And uh, do you guys take care of all the snakes? Or do people in different buildings take care of different we snakes? We take care of a lot of them, but there's a lot of snakes over at the Hamill Family Play Zoo, and their keepers over there take care of those animals. We have a couple snakes out at Fragile Kingdom, and the keepers there take care of those. And then Australia House, we have a few species of snake there, and they take care of those over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's your favorite snake? Uh, this is always such a hard one. Um, I'm actually going to go with the Massasauga. Uh, one, I, I like native stuff. I like local stuff. Uh, I grew up in Michigan. We had Massasaugas there. And for uh, the past few number of years, um, I've been taking part in the meetings of the SSP for the Massasaugas, which includes doing field work. So we're going out in the field for part of a long-term study that's been going on. Uh, and collecting data on the snakes, weights and lengths and sizes, and they're getting transpondered and then recaught extra years to study growth rates. It's a really cool thing that we get to do. So they've definitely found a place in my heart from getting to go stomp around in wet cattail reeds looking for little snakes that hide real well. That's great. How, how long are all these um, snakes' fangs? Because I, I know we saw that one thing that you showed us. Are they all pretty much the same size? So it, it's all going to be proportionate to the size of the, of the snake. So the fang I showed you would have came out of uh, one of our Gaboon Vipers that's in another building. And Gaboon Vipers are known for having exceptionally really long fangs. Um, I would say the fang I showed you guys, only one I, out, of, out of the snakes we have here, is the Catalina would maybe have some approaching that length. I would say with the Massasaugas, okay. pretty small because it's a, a real, real little snake. Mm -hmm. Aside from fangs, do snakes have any other teeth? They do have teeth. So the fangs are obviously specialized for um, prey gathering. That's that's the purpose of them is uh, is to get prey. But then they do have rows of other non-fang teeth. Um, same thing with the hog nose. They're very sharp teeth because they, those teeth need to grab their prey item and be able to hold them in place um, so they can go and then constrict. Uh, does the legless lizard have teeth? The legless lizard does have teeth. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Right. A little, little bit different. They have some that are more kind of, kind of like molars to help crunch and grind stuff up like insects if they're eating them. Okay. Which snake requires the most food? Ooh, the most food. That's an interesting question because as snakes get bigger and you think they would need more food, you actually cut back and you're reducing how much they're eating. But right now, our reticulated python that's over at 
uh, reptiles and birds. Right now that snake is eating a four to five pound rabbit every week. Wow. So that's, that's quite a lot. <laughs> How often do they shed their skin? So that's going to vary on how old they are, how much they're getting fed, and how fast they're growing. So when snakes are young, they'll shed quite a bit because they're growing really fast. They're, they're, we're feeding them uh, more frequently. They want to, they need to, in, in nature, they would want to get size on them because that offers them some security because they're now bigger. They're not, not worried about getting eaten as much. So they tend to grow really fast when they're young. So a snake that say is just born, because not all snakes hatch out eggs, um, or just hatches, um, that may shed four or five times in the first year. And then you may have a snake, um, say something like a boa or a python that can live 30, 40 years, maybe even longer than that. They may shed once a year at that point. They, they never stop growing, but that growing really slows down mm -hmm. as they get older. Out of all the snakes that you showed us, do any of them not lay eggs? None of the pit vipers. So the rattlesnakes are all, we, we call the live birth, technically they're in a soft shelled egg inside mom and they hatch out of that soft shelled egg in mom and then they're born. So it's still, there's still technically an egg involved, but all the rattlesnakes here, um, would, would have what we would look at and call a live birth. Um, the fox snake, uh, the hog nose, they would hatch out eggs. Uh, where, where does the legless lizard live in the wild? So that is a European species of legless lizard, and so it's kind of spread across um, Europe. We do have legless lizard species in this country. They don't get anywhere near as large as that, but we do have uh, legless lizards here in this country. Really? That's cool. Um, people love to ask their bathroom questions. Do snakes go to the bathroom like other animals or do they have a different system? It's a little bit of a different system. Um, trying to think of the best way to explain this. Very similar to like what a bird would have. It's a cloaca is what it's called. And whereas in mammals, most of your mammals, I'm sure there's an exception. Um, the two different sorts of waste are run through a different system. In snakes, it all is part of the same system, if that kind of makes, makes sense to you. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap things up. Um, I hope when you guys can come back out here again, you'll stop by, visit some of the snakes I showed you today. Uh, look for us, because if you see us around, ask us questions. We love to talk to people face to face and ask questions that way. So be sure to stop in at Feathers and Scales when we come back out. Thanks.